One of the things I found looking back at companies that generated a 10x return over the last 10 years is that most of them had growth rates in excess of 20%. Now, there's no magical number behind this, but this is a good gauge for how a company needs to grow in order to generate 10x style returns. I wanted to take that a step further and look for companies that have grown over 25% compound annual growth rate over the last 10 years, or at least their time as a public company. And there were 10 companies that stuck out to me as the kind of companies that could grow significantly, maybe not 30%, but maybe in excess of 20% over the next 20 years. So that's what I'm going to dig into today. Hopefully these will give you some good ideas for high growth stocks if you're looking for high growth asymmetric kind of returns. My name is Travis Holliam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they're going to give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's start with one of my favorite stocks right now, and that is Celsius Holding. This stock has fallen a little bit recently, but just a phenomenal performer over the last five years. And it's because of this phenomenal growth rate. You can see here that since the end of 2020, the, com the company has a compound annual growth rate of 138%. That is not a typo, just a tremendous track record of growth for Celsius. And there's a few ways that they do this. One that's really critical for them is this is a very capital light business. They outsource basically all of their manufacturing and distribution through partners who actually mix their product. They don't use the Coca-Cola model where they're sending something like syrup which is a proprietary recipe to their bottlers. They just have the bottlers buy all the products that they need, can it, and then Pepsi is their distribution partner. So they're able to grow the business extremely rapidly. What the, core, what the company focuses on is designing their formulas, doing the marketing, designing cans, all of those back office kind of things. So it's really a sales and R&D organization. And then they outsource most of the manufacturing and distribution. That's how you get this kind of growth rate. That's how Celsius stays profitable as it grows this quickly. And I don't see this changing anytime soon. We have heard management talk about one of the big changes for 2024 is the success that they've had means that retailers are going to give them better spots in their retail stores, better locations. I know that I have seen that recently at some of the places that I shop. If you look for Celsius, you probably see the same thing as well. It's showing up more in end caps. It's no longer being hidden in kind of back corners. Now this is going to be front and center product. They're going to have more and more partnerships with small restaurants. So I think this is a company that can continue to grow for the foreseeable future. The challenge is it's a very expensive stock. And this is always the downside with growth companies like this. Price to earnings multiple is 106 on a trailing basis, 54 on a forward looking basis. So that means maybe is a little bit more reasonable for investors. Uh, enterprise value to sales on a trailing basis is 10.6 and on a forward looking basis is 7.1. So that's the downside. It's very expensive, but I love the company. I love the growth rate. And that's why this is one stock that I have been adding recently. The second company is one that everybody knows that's Tesla. Tesla has grown its revenue at a 46% compound annual growth rate over the past decade. So this has seen the launch of the Model 3, the Model Y. Those are generating a vast majority of the company's revenue now seeing the expansion into China and also Germany. So a ton of momentum behind Tesla and the stock has responded as well. Now the challenge for Tesla is this was fundamentally an automaker. This is a manufacturing company. So typically what happens with manufacturing companies is you're eventually playing with the laws of supply and demand. And as you increase the supply in the, at the rate that Tesla has, it can start to put pressure on those margins. You have high fixed costs. And that's what we're starting to see is some of those growing pains that come with Tesla. This is the reason that this is not a stock that I have ever owned because I think we've seen some of the challenges that the company has had with margins and profitability coming down. We've seen that coming in the past. So, but you can't argue with Tesla's growth rate over the past decade, just a phenomenal performing company. Now, is it going to continue that growth? Well, investors certainly think it, think that it will. Price to earnings multiple is 44 on a trailing basis. On a forward basis, price to earnings multiple actually goes up to 59. So investors are expecting those earnings to come down. The enterprise value to sales multiple on a forward basis is 5.3. So typically, automakers are going to trade in more like the 0.3 to 0.5 enterprise value to sales multiple. So Tesla, about 10 times more valuable than its competitors are on a lot of metrics. But you can't argue with the growth rates. That's why it's a stock to keep your eyes on. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. 
Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Axon is the next company on my list. Axon is a company that I've held for a very long time. And you can see the success of the company right here. 27.4% compound annual growth rate over the past decade. There are a number of reasons for this. The Axon used to be called Taser. Tasers were their primary product. And then about a decade ago, they moved into body cameras. And it wasn't just body cameras they were selling. They were selling cloud services to evidence.com. And they have just continued to build out that ecosystem. Now what you buy if you go to them to equip your law enforcement with tasers and with body cameras is typically a subscription product. So you pay a fee of 100 to $200 a month. You get a taser. You get a body camera or a couple of body cameras. And you can include cameras for your fleets or your auto vehicles and then cloud services as well. And there's a bunch of tools that they've added in, in cloud services. And that has really driven the company's growth. Now, most of any profits that they've made, so gross profits that they made, have been reinvested in the company in the form of increased sales and marketing and also R&D expenses. But we're starting to see Axon turn the corner to profitability. $146 million in net income over the past year. And I think we'll see that continue in the future because the growth rate isn't probably going to grow at a 25 to 30% growth rate over the next decade, but they're going to increase that bottom line at a much more rapid rate, get operating leverage from the business. So still a company I love, very expensive again, which seems to be a theme here. Enterprise value to sales is 12.7. So that's pretty expensive. Price to earnings multiple, like I said, not focused on the bottom yet, bottom line yet, but is 130. So something to keep an eye on there from a valuation perspective, but love the growth behind Axe. The fourth company that still makes this list is Enphase Energy. Now, Enphase is going through an interesting period because they are expecting pretty weak results for the fourth quarter of 2023. We don't have those results yet, but as of right now, as I'm recording, compound annual growth rate over the past decade, 28.6%. This is a company that almost went out of business less than a decade ago, and it was saved by a number of different investments. And you can see that in 2019, sales just started to take off like a rocket. The industry moved more to more module level power electronics. That's exactly what Enphase is making. And the micro inverters that they make has been a preferred solution for a lot of installers in the solar industry. There's a lot of debate about should we be using, be using micro inverters or power optimizers. But right now, micro inverters are gaining market share. And that has been to the benefit of Enphase. That's why you see the phenomenal growth rate. That's going to probably slow down, at least for the foreseeable future in late 2023 and into 2024. But the solar industry continues to grow, and I think there is still a lot of tailwind behind the industry long term, and Enphase will be one of the beneficiaries. NVIDIA, it should be no surprise, is also on this list. NVIDIA has had a 27.7% compound annual growth rate over the past decade, is now one of the biggest companies in the world. And you can see this growth has been a little bit choppy, but it's been just phenomenal. Now, what I think is really fascinating about NVIDIA is the business that didn't exist a decade ago. And that is the company's data center revenue. You can see the data center revenue now $32.7 billion over the past year. And that's now about three quarters of the company's revenue. Like I said, this is a business that didn't exist a decade ago. In 2014, there was $199 million of NVIDIA sales that went into the data center. That is peanuts for a company like that. So you want to look at where NVIDIA is really growing, not really in gaming. It hasn't been in virtual reality. Crypto has kind of come and gone. The growth driver of this company over the last decade has clearly been the data center. And it looks like that's going to continue at least for the foreseeable future with the backing of artificial intelligence. The next stock is Blink Charging. Now, this is a company that has grown from almost nothing, and that's why you see the growth rate being as high as it is. Compound annual growth rate, 76.5%. But that's because you're coming off of about $500,000 in base in 2013, up to $119 million in the trailing 12 months. But a vast majority of that growth has happened since 2020. So basically since the pandemic hit, that's why this is one of those pandemic darling stocks. But I need to show another chart because I don't want investors to confuse revenue growth with profit growth. You can see that Blink Charging's losses are actually larger than their revenue. And that's been the case since as far back as this chart goes. So if you're looking for a company that can generate a profit, Blink Charging may not be that company. So who knows how long this company 
can survive given the fact that it is burning more money than it's generating in revenue. I don't think selling a commodity electricity through a commodity plug, which is what standardized plugs are, even if you're moving to the NACS standard in North America, I don't know where that generates profit long term, but this has absolutely been a phenomenal revenue growth company over the past 10 years. Mercado Libre is the next company on the list, and Mercado Libre has grown revenue at a 41% compound annual growth rate over the past decade. You can see this has just been phenomenal growth, not only in the retail business, but also in the finance business. Once again, we run into the challenge that we have come into, that we've run into with all of these companies is what do you pay for a company that's growing this quickly? Right now, Mercado Libre's price to earnings multiple is 91. Forward price to earnings multiple, a little bit better at 56. And the enterprise value to sales multiple is seven with a forward enterprise value to sales multiple of 5.3. So again, a very expensive stock, but it's hard to argue with the performance of this company and the moat that it's building in its Latin American markets. This has been called the Amazon and Square of Latin America. I think that's probably the right way to think about it. And given potential growth and given potential economic growth, the move towards e-commerce in those markets. I think there's a ton of tailwinds behind Mercado Libre long term. That's why we've seen this phenomenal growth rate. That's why the stock is expensive as it is. Don't know yet if that will continue, but if it does long term, this will absolutely be a market outperformer. The stock on the list is ServiceNow. Now, this is a company that has leaned into some of the trends for businesses outsourcing some of their back office solutions. And that's why you get the growth rate that you see here, 33.1% for ServiceNow over the past decade, now a $9 billion in revenue company. And we're starting to see that revenue turn into profit, into a pretty significant profit with $1.7 billion in net income over the past year. And one of the things that I like about this business is it allows the company to land and expand in an organization and these are oftentimes a lot of services the companies don't necessarily want to do themselves or don't want to be experts in. They want to be able to outsource some of their HR tools. They want to be able to outsource IT operations and some finance operations and supply chain. So that's made ServiceNow much more valuable to a lot of companies, driven all of that growth that we've seen over the past decade. Now, I don't see this growth stopping. It may go, the company may grow slower. We have reached a level of scale and and that's the one risk for ServiceNow. Again, pretty expensive stock. Price earnings multiple is 94. And on a forward basis, it's 60. Enterprise value, enterprise value to sales multiple on a forward basis is 15. So this is, our, I would say, our, one of the more, so I would say this is one of the more expensive companies that we've talked about today, but a phenomenal business. So if shares pull back, this would be one that I would love to get a, at a much better value. The second to last company on the list is Palo Alto Networks. This is a company that you can probably interact with on a regular basis, but don't even know it because they're doing things like VPNs and cybersecurity in the background. As that has become more and more important, you can see that it has driven the company's growth, compound annual growth rate of 31% over the past decade. And this is another company that is starting to turn the corner to profitability, reported losses until the fiscal 2023 year and now over the past 12 months. $614 million in net income. So a lot of growth, improving operations and net income, given the fact that they've just turned that corner to profitability, the price to earnings multiple of 194 probably doesn't mean a whole lot for investors, but we are, again, paying a lot for those sales, 14 times sales on a trailing 12-month basis and on a next 12-month basis, that multiple is still 12.6. So very expensive stock. But again, just like ServiceNow, very valuable company. And if shares start to pull back in any significant way, that's one I would that's when I would be looking to get much more aggressive in buying this stock. Paycom is the final company on this list, 32% compound annual growth rate. And this is one where the stock has actually started to pull back pretty significantly recently. And this is what happens when you don't meet investor expectations. So the multiples here are much more attractive than some of the companies that we talked about earlier. Price to earnings multiple of 34, enterprise value to sales of 6.7. And those are both on a trailing 12-month basis on a next 12-month basis, which is based on analyst estimates. Price to earnings multiple, just 25 and enterprise value to sales multiple of six. So much more attractive. They have seen that growth rate slow, but this is still a growth company. Since the end of 2020, the compound annual growth rate is still 25%. 
So still a phenomenal growth company. But when those growth rates go down from 30, 35% down to 20%, investors start to question if you're going to keep decelerating that growth rate. That's what Paycom has faced recently. But all of these companies are phenomenal growth companies. And I think if you're looking for asymmetric returns, those 10x returns, you need to look for companies that are growing at a very high rate or can grow at a very high rate in the future. The 10 that I've talked about today have grown phenomenally on a look back basis. Some of them will continue to grow into the future. There's some, there are others that I have more questions about. Is NVIDIA going to keep this up? Because I don't know if they have another data center business to build in their back pocket or how big that data center business to bit can be. Same thing goes with Tesla. Are they reaching some sort of scale level where they're not going to be able to grow at the same rate? We've seen that over the last year or two that they're now having to lower prices. So maybe the same tailwinds don't exist over the next decade. On the, hand, on the other hand, there are other companies that will continue to grow. Axon's a great example of that. Celsius Holdings is another example. Unless their products go out of favor with consumers, it seems like there's a lot of tailwinds there. But hopefully these give you some good ideas to dig a little bit further into with high growth stocks, because this is where we want to look for those asymmetric returns. And these are at least worth keeping on your watch list. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next.